My special guest today is an incredible actress who enriched one of the Bill's most gripping storylines with her superb performance, which quite rightly earned her own miniseries. As if one awesome talent isn't enough, she's also a critically acclaimed novelist, and I'm so excited to be celebrating her career with her today. Ladies and gents, load your shotguns, because Stanton's back. Make some noise of a mighty Clara Salomon. Clara, welcome to the Bill podcast. Thank you very much. What an intro. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Uh, deserving of a legend. Um, how How is lockdown treating you? How has it affected your, your work, your life? Well, it's affected... Oh, my God, it's, a, it's affected everybody, hasn't it? I mean, no one's escaped in the, on the, in the planet. But um, uh, personally, um, I, what I, I, the last novel I wrote, um, Too Close was under a pseudonym of Natalie Daniels, um, my sister's name and my brother's name, um, uh, was due to go into production. I've, I've been adapting it for TV, so it was due to go into production, um, uh, stop filming April the 21st. Oh. So, it's a, a, personally, it's a big shame. It, it, it's going to happen to stop filming in September instead. So um, Okay. And so. Yeah, Emily Watson's still in the lead. She is, yeah. Yeah, this is yeah. exciting. Yeah. Because you, you, yeah. you've written for television before, haven't you? But this is the first time one of your novels has been adapted. Yes, yes. And in fact, um, yeah. No, I loved I loved adapting it. And now I'm adapting this one. I've nearly finished uh, The Boat. That was my second novel. Oh, wow. So I'm adapting that for a, a, a Hollywood director. But, you know... Many a slip between cup and lip, as my grandmother always said, and I do have a very messy lap. I have a lot has slipped in my time writing wise, you know. Right. Wow. It's very it's very hard to get things done. So this so too close was a it was at a critical stage. Uh, it will happen, it's just going to be delayed till September at the moment. Because it's been over a decade since Shame on You was published. So how, how what it's been 11 years that's right so i write very slowly it always seems to take me <laughs> to write a book yeah but i can imagine it's a very cathartic process cathartic people often ask if, if writing is cathartic but i sort of feel like i'm um, if you imagine i'm um, i'm swimming around in a in a nice cleanish lake and i go to the bottom and i dig up all the silt so it's not, it doesn't feel very cathartic. It just feels like I made a lot of mud. But it, <laughs> however, I do know what's down there, you know. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how much has the publishing game changed in that 10 years? Because digital wasn't as big as like 10 years no. ago as it is now. So I know that's a really interesting question. Um, I know that I've sold, uh, Too Close has sold infinitely better on um, uh, digital. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an, an audiobook. Audiobook, actually. People love audiobook now. And um, I read it. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah, I know, I know. I sound rather successful, don't I? I've spent oh, many years signing on and uh, being, a, you know, being very poor. So I don't feel it, but, um, you know, perseverance. And uh, what's your writing process? Do you like to get up in the morning and write or well, is it... You know, lockdown's a very good uh, time to discover one's process. But I know I'm, I'm, I'm always been an early bird. So I work from six to 12, one maybe, and then I don't. And then I might do a little bit of tweaking in the end of the day. But 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 I my, my best out, I mean, I often wake up with knowing exactly what I'm going to write that day. You know, oh, uh, wow. it's like my brain's working by itself, although... Although lockdown has made, I do feel like I have lost my brain. My brain, I don't, I don't know where it is at the moment. Let's go back to the beginning. Like when, when, when did you discover the acting? I always wanted to act. I used to live in, I was brought up in Archway. And my mum used to take me to St George's Theatre, which was in Tufnell Park. And it was in a little church hall and I remember seeing it was tiny tiny and I remember sitting in the front row seeing Judy Dench was it Judy Dench and um Richard Bryars in um uh Twelfth Night and I was four and I was just 
there's your twin, there's your twin, shouting out, being annoying. I think, you know, they, they, and just remembering, just thinking I have to, I just really know I can do that. I just, that's, that, you know, like lots of actors, you sort of always known that that's what you want to do. But, um, and then I, then I think once you get into drama school, it, it, there's the, you, it's all set for you. Because, I mean, you know, Central, there were like, 2,000 female applicants, 1,000 male applicants, 16 men's places, 12 women's places. So once you got in, you were, there was no, you weren't going to do anything else or you at least were going to try, you know, you were going, you were going to try. So, so, so I think I got into drama school when I was 17 or 18 and that was, that was that. And, okay. and, but I thought I was going to be a Shakespearean actress. That's what I thought. But life never works out quite how you plan it, does it? Well, no. I, interestingly, I interviewed Russell Bolter earlier today, who sends his love to you. Oh, uh, and and he said, you're a wonderful woman, I quote. Oh, how and is he? he? Oh, he's doing great. He's, he's buzzing, yeah. Yeah, he's, really? yeah, he's doing really good. Uh, but like he was saying, like he he'd you know rule Shakespeare Company and you know had wanted to do all that. But he's, he's like, yeah, he's a bloody good actor. <laughs> he's he's a phenomenal actor. As but, are you? Oh, you know. thank you. Oh, well, he, uh, he's so good, so so such a natural. But, but like, he's, you, is he is he acting? He he uh, he did a couple of tellies last year. Great. Um, yeah, because he's based in Bristol. Yeah. And a filmmaker who knew he was in Bristol just offered him a part in something. He was like, oh, this could right. be fun to, you know, get back. I mean, he's far too good. Like you are. I hope we could persuade you for a comeback because you're oh, far too you know, good. I keep trying to do a little Hitchcockian appearance in uh, what yeah. I write. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's great that you're doing the audio book. Because yeah, I love that was the first bit of acting I've done for years. And uh, I loved it. Mm. I absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I love it. It's, you know, it's a fabulous, if you get, you know, I love, I love it. Mm. I just can't imagine doing it now, you know. Okay. I haven't done it for so long, you know. Mm. Well, hopefully uh, reminiscing about the bill might uh, <laughs> inspire you to return. Because it seems to me you, you just smash that performance on camera which not everyone gets but you seem to have immediately worked out how to use that medium so where where does that come from that's that's quite a I presume you didn't get trained that at drama you school have a little bit you were mainly trained in theatre at, at drama school but uh, you did have a little bit of camera training but um but i think um uh, being on the bill was was what trained me. You know, you went, you you don't ever get the opportunity to spend that long in front of the camera in any training or any you know day in day out like a normal job six days a week. What was it? Fourteen hours a day. It was just relentless. I mean, there was no time for sort of ego or panicking or there there just wasn't time. So you just had to get on with it, and that was probably really good for all of us because you'd done a fantastic guest part in the show a few years earlier um, if you, if you can't remember. believe you remember that Mike. yeah tom kotcher yeah. is your what? Uh, what was her name tom kotcher is is your main he was the regular in it who's interviewing you and trying to you're an intimidated uh witness suspect you've been abused been beaten and they want you to testify and you, you you're very loyal you won't do it but he just it's a great because he's just slowly un, unraveling the holes in your story and then kind of puts you in danger to be able to do it and, and it's a it's a great a great episode for you both it's almost a two-hander um so yeah that's a, that's a cracker wow. that i think i was quite young then yeah must... it's it 95 Oh, okay. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Wow. Everyone was in the bill, weren't they? Oh yeah. 
Well, so, yeah. so so many, um, you know, Russ had done a, a guest part, Ray Ashcroft had done a guest part, Kerry Pears, you know, a lot of the, the people. I was in drama area. school with Kerry. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, she's, she's another fantastic great. actress. Oh, she's great. Yeah. yeah. She's such a good actress. Yeah. 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 There's something in the, it, it must have been something in the genes at Merton because you all look the same as you did in the bill. <laughs> you know, you've all, you all look, like you could eat, you could easily be firing that shotgun now and <laughs> chasing Billy around. I reckon Billy would be up yeah, for it as well. So it's a bit fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> not not HD, thank <laughs> So how did how did you come to be cast as Claire, and and what was the what was the process, and and how much of what was to come? Yeah, was Matt. I do remember this actually. I remember that I, my writing career had started. So I was writing an episode and I was, I'd sort of gone, right, that's it. I'm going to be a writer now. I'm going to be a writer because, you know, I'm not getting the work I'd like to get. I don't want to be, I, I, want, I, I want to really get my teeth into something. So I'm going to be, a, I'm, and I was writing an episode of a TV show called Always and Everyone, and, um, which I was later fucking dumped off. But anyhow, um, but, uh, but I, was, um, I was writing it and uh, really, you know, decent money. And I remember going for the audition for the bill. Not, I just decided this. Oh, anyhow, I didn't think I'd get it. But but uh, I was feeling like I was putting acting aside, which probably gave me a a sort of confidence. Yeah, an edge. And yeah, yeah. Uh, and. Um, so I went to, I think I was the last one of the day in there. It was with Tom, Tom Cotter, the oh. producer. So I, I did the audition. I knew it went well. And then, and then they recalled me. I remember saying, oh, can I not do it like this? Can I do it like that? And they was like, yeah, yeah, fine, fine. And um, it worked better for me that way. And um, I remember being quite bossy, actually. I was quite bossy because I didn't really care. Right. Yeah. I, had, I was already doing something, so I was sort of feeling like, oh. um, and obviously that gave me uh, uh, the right attitude. And um, then they recalled me. I was like, right, well, uh, and then they offered it. And I was, oh, this was such a dilemma, you know, because, oh, why didn't you offer me this a year ago when I would have been, you know, I, I was, but I, I knew I wouldn't be able to do the writing and it was going to be really difficult. I'd just been asked to write the second, the next episode as well. So I was like, I, it, I'd done a good job on the first episode. They wanted me on the second episode. It was like, oh no. So I said, no. So I said no to the bill. So I said, no, no, I can't do it. And they came back with a bit higher offer. I went, no, 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 I, I really can't because I'm doing this. But I really wasn't trying to mess them around or be arsy. I was just like, you know, and my, I said to my agent, look, I'm getting paid this for that. So so I, I'm really not going to say yes unless it, unless it's worth my while because I can, I can, I've got a mortgage, I've got a rent to pay and, and I need, uh, this is at last some, anyhow, uh, uh, uh. And then they went, they offered what I asked for. Wow. So I was like, all right then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I think they told me that my character was a mole and that uh, no one in the cast knew and, uh, and it would stay that way. So I, I had to keep it quiet. Oh, wow. So your colleagues didn't know just like the character didn't know. Yeah. Wow. For a while. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. That, that must have been quite a strange dynamic for you to have that secret. Uh, well, no, I wasn't there to make friends. I was there to do the job and, you know, I didn't mind. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then gradually, I started making friends. Okay. <laughs> at um at Russ Billy. But they but they worked they worked you so hard, right? So I mean I did three months without a day off. 
without two consecutive days off. I got one day off every fortnight and, and I was living in Hackney and I had to drive to Merton every day from six o'clock in the morning. I didn't get home. So I left the house at five in the morning. I didn't get home till 10 at night. Didn't have a day off. Didn't, you know, I was so tired. One morning, I, I very nearly had a horrible car crash because you, had, you had, obviously you, had, you didn't get cars, which I'm sure is much more common now, but in those days it wasn't common. You had to drive yourself. And um, back to that audition, I remembered that Michael Sim Sim Simpson was uh, a bit scary. And I knew the others wanted me, but I couldn't read him at all. He was a bit, right. he was a bit scary. Um, anyhow, so, so this day I was, I was absolutely, I realised I can't, and then people have been complaining about it for months, saying they were just so tired, so exhausted. When I nearly had this car crash, I, I, I went in and I went to Tom, the producer, and said, um, I'm, I'm really sorry, I I'm, I'm can't do this anymore. I'm going to have to hand in my notice. Uh, I'll finish the episode. I don't want to leave you in the lurch. I'll finish the work that I have to do, but I just can't do this. And he was, and, uh, and he was like, oh, right, right. And I, and I had to go to set then anyhow. So I was off on location somewhere. And I remember I was in, uh, we're filming it outside in this thing. And I remember seeing Michael Simpson walking out and thinking, uh oh. And I remember he was watching the, watching us shoot this scene. And then he said, Clara, can I have a word? And we went into the Winnebago and he said, um, what's going on? What's going on? And I said, I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't want to leave you in the lurch, but I nearly killed myself this morning. And I just, I haven't had a day off for three months. And uh, he was like, what, what, what? You know, there was, he was really unaware that of course this didn't, it, it only, it, it was bad luck. I was in this episode, I was in that episode. It just had worked out the sh scheduling of it. I had had, I was just so tired, you know. And then I remember he, they were just so lovely. The production, the, they were just so lovely. And then he said, um, would it help if, uh, would it help if you had a, a, a car to pick you up? And I'm like, well, yeah, that would, that, that would help because I wouldn't be killing myself. And uh, um, it'd be great to be able to read a script. You know, no, no time to read a script. So, I mean, I had a memory, I, I could just go and we all could, you could just go, okay, action. Uh, you know, no, never looked at it, never read it before. It was in, there was no time. That's how you get five hours. That's why everyone sits on the hoof and it's, it works. It works because it's so, you know, um, and Oh my God, I pissed off some of the old boys that I got a car. I got a car. I remember Billy coming up to me. He didn't know me that one. He went, are you, you're, you know, checking me out before we were having all our big stuff together. He didn't know I was the mole either, I don't think, at that stage. And he went, I hear you got a car. <laughs> that <laughs> means, oh, <whoa. laughs> I remember that. I remember that. Oh, wow. Yeah, the they... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they um were the most lovely people to work for mm. and i and that and that taught me a lot too you know they weren't aware they weren't aware of what was going on on the shop floor you know mm. i think we made four and sometimes five hours every 10 days you know which is and we wouldn't know, you know, you might do three or four reps in one day. I remember, I remember when I first started there and I remember turning up um, on, you know, having come from one episode and then I was in another episode and then I had like one line in another episode. So I turned up and I said to the director, I haven't had time to read this script. What, 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 why am I here? What am I saying? Why, why am I saying? And I remember the old handers looked at me and went, you never say that. <laughs> You never know what you're doing, but you never say it. <laughs> <laughs> the old saying used to be, there are no stars in this show with the bill. Mm. But I feel like you you went in and you were instantly uh, like the lead. I mean, you, if you're in an episode, you're the lead. You know, oh, because you, of the storyline. Yeah, of... yeah. I mean, you're, you're, a, you're an integral part of like all of your episodes. 
and and that's like yeah, so storylines, yeah, oh, magnificent. Yeah. And Great. they, you know, at that time the show had changed its format to kind of survive. Um, yeah. Later, it would change it too far, you know, and and it, and it lost what the bill was about. But in this era, it's arguably at the top of its game because. You I know get... we had 11 million viewers at the peak of that story. Yeah, which at that time is that's massive. Like, yeah, yeah. that's huge. But I mean, like, you know, I remember you and Billy Murray like doing press. Was it in New York? You were being yes. interviewed about it. Like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like that, that's, that's that. That's what I mean about stars. That's like that's like a big deal, isn't it? Going to New York to promote your show. Like what you know, and filming in Sydney. You know, and it's like. Oh my god, that was brilliant! Yeah. yeah, that was brilliant. Yes, yes. It, I mean, I've never, I've certainly never felt like a, a star, but um, yes, it was very glamorous. All that it was very glamorous. It was great fun. Yeah, great fun. I have, I have such warm, happy feelings of all my time there, and and you know, and became really good friends with. Uh, Russ mm. and Billy, we had a hoot. We really had a good time. The chemistry's still there for all to enjoy. Like the the, the three of you really worked well together. Yeah. The the performances yeah. are like I mean the whole cat and mouse thing with Billy is just uh, the the enjoyment that he, he despite everything he, he you know even at the end when he's he's going into the van. The enjoyment oh, yeah. of that cat and mouse game, like, and uh, he's like, "I'll see you in a year. I've booked us a table for dinner." And like, you play it so well, we have a good. Oh shit! That surely that can't happen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yes. But it, you know, it's like, yeah. Oh, it's, it's glorious. Yes. Oh. It, his first line to you is like, oh, "Um, on your first episode, we are being introduced to everyone." And he says, "I hope you're good at spinning plates. I hope you're good at juggling." And you say, well, I've been known to throw a few balls in the air in my time, which is <laughs> a great Stanton line, you know. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember that. What What did you enjoy about playing her and, and how how different are you to her? Like, you know. Oh, she was so clever. <laughs> <laughs> was, I mean, I really enjoyed... Um, I just love pretending to be a clever policewoman. <laughs> you know... I learned a lot about the police. I learned a lot about, um, you know, fascinating, fascinating job to be CID. You know, mm. really loved, really loved playing her. Do you know, I, I don't think I've ever watched an episode. No way. I don't think so, no. no. Whoa. Well, it, I mean, the thing is, like, you were every... You're essentially once that storyline kicks off, you're making a movie every episode. You know, it's a lot of yeah, a lot of action and car chases and foot chases and yeah, you know, like well, firing a shotgun, like you know, I've, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, I remember you, that. Yeah, you must be the only bill regular to ever fire a shotgun. That's... Yeah, it was a proper gun. My God, a real kickback. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're superb in that as well. Like, like. Not just saying it, it's a solid performance. You because oh, you just you. you just root for you, that's the thing. And you know that you know that the character's putting everything she's got into it, but at the same time, as a viewer, I know you are putting everything you've got into that performance. Like and, and it stands up today. So be proud because it's oh, a knockout. So nice of you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's a it's a like serious it's just impressive, you know. Some people you watch and you just like knock that out of the park, and that's why I do this because I like to let you all know stuff that you did twenty years ago is still being enjoyed and appreciated all wow. over all over the world. You know, really? where's, it, where's it being played now? It's on. It's on. It, well, it's permanently on in Australia. Is um, it? Yeah, but I, I like. People tune into this podcast. I get people listening from Italy, from Serbia, from Bosnia, from uh, Venezuela, Japan. Like the wow. the worldwide wow. audience for the bill is it's still alive and kicking. And touched a nerve, didn't it? Oh I, yeah. 
I, I mean, and I used to love it at the beginning of it, the half hour reps, and it was just yeah. middle aged, met dirty, grubby, smelly men in suits, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. And I really liked that. It was great. Yeah, Chris Ellison and Tony yeah, Scannell yeah. and all those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, you, you, I suppose when you were working on it, a, a lot of the, the legends was still there like Trudy and Mark Wingett and yeah Trudy she's lovely yeah lovely Greg Donaldson do you remember Greg yeah Yeah. in his in your first episode is Stanton like Greg gets tasered and 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 has a gas a gas grenade (laughs) which you disarm like you know uh in in a hospital this this UFO conspiracy theorist wants to gas grenade his kids Uh, yeah I do remember that first episode, actually. And I remember um, the camera was on me and they were all mucking around behind the camera <laughs> trying to make me laugh. And I was like, fuck you, I'm not going to laugh. Yeah. I'm not going to laugh. I love I, I, it. Well, I like, just remember just thinking, I came in to do a job and I will do it. And I just remember thinking, oh, you bastards, trying to make me laugh on my first reverse. You know, trying to make me laugh. I remember thinking, you know, they, it, it was a lot of mucking around. I, I couldn't afford to muck around. I'd be there more than 16 hours a day. <laughs> Actually, I didn't work, at, I, I did hardly anything to begin with. So you could not work much. You could work, I got paid weekly and you might not work for the week. Right, okay, yeah. So it didn't start to get that exhausting until uh, I was in a lot, you know. Mm. And then they'd, also, then they'd also pop you in other episodes too, so... so. Right. And and did was this the first time in your life where, from a fame point of view, you're suddenly getting recognised, your, your anonymity's yeah. gone? Yeah, that was weird. There was a solar eclipse. No, a lunar eclipse. And I remember um, going down to the newsagents and I was looking up at the the shadow of the, it was night, the shadow of the earth was going over the moon and it was really spectacular. And I remember there was a a gang of, you know, gang of young people having fun on the street corner. And one of them went, oh my God, it's that old woman from the bill. Old woman from the bill. And, um, And I went, I went, Look, look up. There's a lunar eclipse going on. Look, look, that's the shadow of the earth going over the moon. And one of them went, so do you get beach in the end? Do you get my- <laughs> <laughs> There's really big things going on. You- oh, and the other one, get this. I was giving birth. I no, no, I'd woken up in the night. My, I was, um, uh, it was my, the, my second child. And I'd, I woke up in the night only 30 weeks pregnant, severe bleeding everywhere. I was whisked in an ambulance oh. to hospital. I'm whisked into the hospital and the, uh, yeah, I've got a mask here. And, the, and one of the, uh, one of the things goes, are you Tia Stanton from the bill? <laughs> oh my goodness. Is my baby dead? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Whoa. Weird. It was really weird being, being, uh, recognized and i wasn't that comfortable with um not being anonymous to be honest I mean, there are some real perks and uh right when you don't need free things you get a lot of free things right um right right when you can for the first time afford them <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> but i didn't like being recognized and i didn't like um i and not didn't like it but i was uncomfortable with it i was always a bit embarrassed if people ask my autograph, I was really embarrassed. I, was, I so admired people like Billy, who were just generous and happy to be disturbed and sign things. And I thought, oh, that's really nice. That's, that's, I really, I really respect that. I'm just not very good at it. You know, I'm not, mm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed. Well, there's no training for it, is there? You know, on no. how, how to have your anonymity yeah. removed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of, um, it was strange, um, but I imagine if you're properly famous, you really just get used to it and it's just part of the course. But I think you do think you're a little bit special. And my mum said to me, mm, you've got a little bit snooty, a little bit, you're a bit pleased with yourself. I'm thinking, oh my God, she spotted something that I, that something in me had, 
A little bit smug, maybe. Right. Wow. <laughs> That's understandable, though, isn't it? Yes. I, I think I've been, in my life, I've been a, a more successful failure than a successful at failure than um, a, a more failing at success. If I look back, because I think, oh, I can sort of get myself to go. When it, you know, my career has been so up and down, and my life has, I, 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 one year I went earned 100 grand, the following year I earned one grand. You know that that's it's off. It's been like that in in my life quite a lot. So um, I'm always have to have my feet on on the ground. You know, mm. I have to it's sort of an actor's life or a writer's life. You know, you you it's 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 a risk. It's a gamble. You have to sort of find your own anchor. You know, well, it must have been really exciting when Beaches Back came along. Like, where, at what point did you find out they were going to do that? Cause... Oh yeah, that was so exciting. Um, I think before I finished, because I was only contracted for a year. I was only right. going to be there for a year. I knew it was a limited time. I wasn't. As soon as they found out I was a mole, I was out. Yeah. And the natural, the natural storyline was going to find out that I was a mole. So, so, um, so it was always a, it was always a limited amount of time on the job. Mm. But such, such happy memories. Well, yeah, because, you know, you and Billy get, you know, your name on the titles. It's another thing that, about, you know, that's a, that's star billing, isn't it? You know. Well, that, beach is back. Is yeah, that... yeah, yeah, yeah. Your names come up o- over these shots of London on the title sequence. And it's like, no, no one else in the history of the Bills ever had that. Yeah. Chris Ellison, wasn't there some, wasn't there... He, oh yes, he had his Burnside spin-off. Quite right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, that's that. Well, okay. No one has joined the bill, and within a year, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't serve my proper time. <laughs> oh no! Oh, you earned your stripes. That's for sure. I earned my stripes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought. I thought after that, I was going to get loads of work. I thought I would. I would be on the map, on the acting map. Diddly squat. Wow. I had a baby, which probably didn't help, but then nothing. Wow. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? Hero to zero. It's um, it's a horrible business when you think about it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as a career. I must have, you know, I, I just assumed, because this maybe is what my mother was referring to me being a bit smug. I just assumed I was now on the acting map and I'd have, I was, you know, nominated for some award. I, I, I sort of assumed that I would be um, on the map now and, and I, I, I might get offered work. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? Oh, it's, um, it, there's no rhyme or reason for it either. Like, you know, that, it's, it's, uh, when I look at, the actors from the bill who i mean a, a lot gave up and they, they they did other things and and um you know some have arguably been more successful doing other things but but, what? but well uh greg donaldson's now a, a psychotherapist um and he's brilliant at it he's helped someone very close to me really he's brilliant um He's phenomenal. Andrew McIntosh, who was in the bill for 10 years before before you arrived, he was DS Greg. Brilliant actor. Um, he now works in IT. After, right. the, after the bill, he did two tellies where he was playing his character from the bill. Right. He, couldn't, he couldn't escape this 10-year... Right, yeah. You know, um, yeah. it's... it's um, uh, yeah, quite a few have gone into, like, like Russ coaching um, and, um, you know, helping people with presentations and things. And they've gone all over the world doing doing that. But, like, acting is such a... I, I, I admire the skill you all have so much. And, it, it, you know, do you ever get that hankering to, to do it again? Just occasionally. Um, if I see something absolutely brilliant, and it's, it's always theatre... And um, sadly, God knows what's going to happen to theatre. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. I mean, theatre's been around since the Egyptians, since ancient Greece. You know, I mean, 
absolutely be a tragedy. Um, but I suppose actually, you know, once vaccines uh, the norm in some future point, they'll be back, but they need to be looked after now before during this hiatus, they really do. I don't know how I would find it looking at myself now, because I'm so... You honestly haven't changed a bit. You're fine. You've got nothing to worry about there. It, it would be weird. It would be... Uh, I, yeah. I mean, God, I haven't even thought about it. So I, I obviously don't miss it that much, because I really love the writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really I really love it and I love the um I love being my own boss and I love sitting at you know doing it in my time in my way and mm. although although I miss the camaraderie and I miss co-op co you know I miss I as a writer I'm making all these decisions on my own um I think I, I'm really enjoying the screenwriting it's more collaborative right um I'm really enjoying that I really have loved writing this too close. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. It so, must be so exciting when it happens to hear these actors saying your words. I can't wait. Yeah. Emily will be brilliant. Oh, phenomenal. She'll be brilliant. She's so good. She's so good. A, a nice cameo for you in there? Well, I should write something, shouldn't I? Yes, I should please. <laughs> myself in there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. We'll, 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 we'll launch a petition, a campaign, a <laughs> build podcast. Because, uh, and, and I, I mean, I, I remember when it was like the first time I, I, I saw my All Creatures Great and Small book. I held mm. that in my hand, but it must that be thrilling good. when you, when you open up a box of books and they arrive. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. And, and what what was the reason behind the decision to write under a pseudonym for Too Close? Oh, well, I didn't particularly want to, but that was the condition the publishers had. They wanted to launch me as a kind of, in their own, you know, packaging. So it was part right. of the packaging. They didn't want to, uh, you know, they didn't they didn't want me to be connected to the other two books. They Oh, I think it was, it was all about money and like everything is really. I think the book they want to be able to say to the booksellers that this is a debut writer. Okay. Because otherwise the booksellers will look up and go, mm, the boat didn't sell that many, did it? Mm, okay, uh, we'll have X number. Whereas if they go, Natalie Daniels, too close, is a new psychological thriller writer. Then they'll okay. go, oh, okay, yeah, I think. Right. And, and did your profile help you get a publisher or did you get a literary agent first or what that was is a good question no i had a literary agent first before right my son sydney oh wow 18 now no way wow. i know i know wow. i'll get a hold of him what do they think of their mum being a you know a, a star and a, and a writer and a oh and a... they're totally unimpressed really I... I think, I think they have no idea. Once somebody said um, to them, oh, yeah, you know, I really had a crush on your mum in the bill. And they were like, <laughs> you, they didn't even know what the bill, they didn't know anything about it. They didn't know anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, Russ was saying earlier that his kids caught a repeat book, just channel hopping, complete fluke. This was very recently. Oh, right. And they were looking at him on the screen and then looked at him in the room looked back and then looked back again and said, Dad, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, well, it was 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> For the future, obviously, let's get too close off and running. That'd be yeah. fantastic. What's the, the, what's the dream project? What's the unfulfilled ambitions that you'd like? to happen? Well, that's a good question. I would say just more projects, just more. My, my I've written a series called Deja Vu, which very, very, very nearly was made last year. Um, and I would like to see that go. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in an amazing place where I can actually listen to that question and go, it's, it's kind of happening. 
Yeah. I don't have anything that I wish, I don't have a secret career wish that's not happening. Which is fantastic, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm very good at, um, I'm very good at uh, enjoying the present. I normally, I'm, I'm very good at enjoying myself. I'm very, I'm very good at it. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's a quality position to be in, isn't it? Yes, but then I think I think as you get older, you have to you have to be like that, or mm. life would be such a struggle. And I suppose that's that's a, a luxury that a jobbing actor can't have because of the insecurity. Yeah, and you know what? Um, even when I've been really, really skint, I can get lost in writing a book. I mean, really skint, and I, you know, not can't get a fiver out. I can lose myself in my work, in my writing, which you couldn't do as an actor, you know. No. Yes, it's very important to do to to do something you you love, you know, even if even if it's not what you're being paid for, but to mm. do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, 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 you only live once, don't you? You know, got to got to. Well, that's what Shabu is about. Oh. Do you? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, spoilers! Here we go. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well. To to finish, I'm so grateful for your time. I and mean, what does it mean to you that your work in the bill is still being appreciated, and that you're going to make a lot of people's days when this is announced that you've done this? You're going to make a lot of people happy. I can't quite believe it. And um, uh, well, it, it, if it's this easy to make people happy, if you're sure, <laughs> if you're sure that's what's going to happen, yeah, then uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Hello, this is Ben Payton and you have been listening to The Bill Podcast Produced and presented by Oliver Crocker Co-produced by Alana Dewar, Sarah Kuyper, James Ladane and Alex Mockler Executive produced by Glenn Allen, Chris Booth, Daniel Christopher, Andrew Dyack, Paul Dunn, George Fairbrother, Luke Hegarty, Edward Kellett, Jen Morris, Stuart Morris Justin Pitt, Tom Sherrington, Patrick Stratford, and Sarah Went. The Bill Podcast is brought to you in association with author George Fairbrother and Misty Moon Events. You can find out more about both by visiting georgefairbrother.com and mistymoonfilmsociety.com. Oh, and if you like films and you would like to read my reviews, please visit foryourfilmsonly.com. Thanks so much, Ben, and huge thank you to all the patrons who are supporting the Bill Podcast Patreon channel. You can join from £2.49 a month and unlock over 20 hours of Sun Hill related content from reaction and analysis videos to sneak peeks of all the video commentaries of cast and crew. There's over 35 episodes where writers, directors, crew members, members of a regular cast, and guest stars have reunited to celebrate some Sun Hill crackers. You can also claim badges featuring the artwork from my The Bill book, Witness Statements. The artwork is by Rob Hammond. The book, if you haven't got a copy yet, is available on Amazon. It features 40 interviews with cast and crew, giving an in-depth look at the first three series of the hour-long episodes of The Bill. If you live outside of the UK, drop me a message on The Bill podcast Facebook page or on Twitter, and I can let you know how much it is for international shipment. Take care, stay safe, thanks for all your support and bye for now.